So the woman who claims she is the inspiration for Netflix's stalking drama Baby Reindeer is suing the streaming platform for $170 million. Fiona Harvey, who says lead character Martha's life is based on her own, denies ever going to prison or to court as the show portrays. Harvey alleges Netflix allowed viewers to track her down in real life and that she is now being inundated with abuse, according to legal dossiers obtained by TMZ. And so to discuss this, I'm joined by the lawyer, Joseph Cotri Monson. Welcome to the show. Uh, this is a very complicated and unprecedented uh, situation. We're dealing with a uh, uh, Richard Gad, who is a stand-up comedian and a creative individual who has who has uh, written a drama based on real-life events. Isn't he allowed some artistic license in terms of how he portrays that? Well, Andrew, you always start with the big questions, don't you? Yeah, where there's muck, there's brass. We're going into Los Angeles in the libel court, uh, and it's it's over reputational damage. It's about whether statements made about apparently about Fiona Harvey, as I think you rightly say, it's generally accepted that it's her. Uh, but were those statements, were those contentions uh, in the uh, were those contentions in the series correct? Probably more importantly, was what Netflix. Uh, executive Benjamin King said to a select committee a couple of weeks ago, was that true? Because he called it the true story of a convicted stalker. Well, those are big words, aren't they? Do you know so what? If she got five years, that's really uh, something I would not expect. And the reason so, for that. So let's clarify on. that. So, so you have an executive from Netflix saying this is the, based on a true story about a stalker. At the beginning yeah. of the first episode, the words come up, this is a true story, not yeah. this is based on a true story. You also have the press release from Netflix saying that this is a true story. Is that the issue? Had they simply put based on a true story or inspired by real life events, would that then be OK? Because I do worry about people saying to creatives, <clears throat> you can't use elements of your own life well, in, your, in, in your own work. Yeah. It's a good point. And, and lawyers often use phrases like fact and degree. What they're talking about really is the total context. So, yeah, but you, what you don't do is make the lead actress look pretty similar to who we've seen on Piers Morgan uh, in an interview, for example, saying how upset she is. Uh, Fiona Harvey. Uh, I, I think the difficulties are technical, however, because I don't think that this is about whether we're bothered from the point of view of Fiona Harvey's reputation, whether she was convicted or not, because in fact, Laura Ray is a Scottish barrister who's come forward, also spoken to Piers Morgan and basically said, uh, yeah, I was stalked by this person. I'm the lawyer they were talking about. It's my son, my disabled son, who she reported me for, for abusing to the police. Uh, now, I'm not saying that that's true, but she says there was something called a, an interim interdict, uh, which is a Scottish equivalent of a restraining order or a non-molestation order. Now, okay, so can that's I, true, well, let me on. ask you about that. If, if it is the case that, because obviously even the show itself alludes to this idea that the character of Martha was previously in trouble for stalking or allegations of yeah. stalking. There have been allegations against Fiona Harvey uh, uh, that this is the case, uh, that she's also sent numerous obsessive messages to other individuals, including a senior politician. Now, yeah. if those things turn out to be true, does that mean that she has no right to sue for things that are not true within the series? Well, it's interesting because the way that libel law works uh, is if you can justify the major part of the libel, then you can get away with it. This is what found out, uh, I think, the news of the world when they said that Max Mosley was cavorting with Nazi escorts. They weren't Nazi es escorts. And that was so scurrilous beyond the, by, by, beyond the fact that they were, they were sex workers. Well, I, you know, that, that he was partially successful in that claim. So publishers can only go so far in terms of making mistakes. But it's an interesting question, this. There could be a technical finding based on the fact that incorrect things have been said. But then it's a question of proving reputational harm uh, whether there has been actual loss, uh, I understand, although I'm not professing to know this, not having seen a finding on it, that Fiona Harvey has not got a, a, a significant work history, so claiming loss of earnings will be difficult. And what is the real harm? 
if the evidence is there and it goes to the evidence, not necessarily what has been said about the evidence by Netflix about whether there was a conviction or not. If she is a stalker, a claim will either fail or damages will be negligible. And those no win, no fee, presumably lawyers that have approached her, as often happens in America, uh, where there's a dollar to be earned uh, on a no win, no fee basis and claiming this hundred and seventy million dollars. Well, they won't get very far on their twenty five percent. So that's very interesting. So if it is determined that she did behave in, 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 in this way that is alleged in terms of the activity, that has been deemed stalkering, stalking, um, then it doesn't matter, from, from what you're saying, it doesn't matter that there are suggestions in the series that she sexually assaulted him, that there are suggestions that she went to prison and was, was, was convicted. You're saying that well, those that things might not matter. Well, there are different issues. I think one saying that somebody's been sexually assaulted another person is probably worse than stalking. It's materially different. I think the punishment for the stalking is less important than whether the stalking took place. And I have to say, I am deeply skeptical about the idea of a five-year sentence. The landmark case in 1996, I think it was Anthony Burstow. Uh, you may remember it. It was one in which uh, GBH, grievous bodily harm assault, uh, was pleaded guilty to by the defendant on the basis that the stalking was so bad it caused real significant psychological harm. That was only a three-year sentence. This, five years, I'm, I'm skeptical about it. It remains to be seen. I mean, surely uh, that will be on record. Uh, it will be a matter of fact whether she was convicted and went to prison or not. And presumably she wouldn't bring this case uh, if, if that would if that were, were in fact true wouldn't make any sense would it uh in my job all the time uh people say and and sometimes defendants or witnesses say well i wouldn't have done that because then i would have got caught so obviously logically i wouldn't have done that or why would i do that stupid thing People do stupid things all the time. I'm not saying she has done, made a mistake or her lawyers have made a mistake or not, but I wouldn't read in and assume the logic of their actions as to the fact that something exists behind it. Can I ask you very finally about this question of artistic freedom and, uh, and the impact on creatives? Because if it, de it is determined that the, the, the lawsuit is successful, if it is the case uh, that Netflix has actually made a real mistake here in terms of their depiction of a real life individual, yeah. will, will Will they be hyper cautious in the future? Will stand up comedians have to be extremely cautious about mentioning individuals from their own life? Is that is, is it well, going to change the whole uh, industry? Stand up comedians are already pretty careful when it when it comes to talking about other people. Really? And Netflix, <laughs> Not the ones well, I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think talking about cases where they're still sub judice, they still have to be heard, for example. I think for the most part, apart from in the respect of R. Kelly, uh, who uh, I remember uh, Dave Chappelle uh, say, I think that guy did it. Uh, having listened, of course, in advance to those audios of him boasting of his crimes as he was conducting them that's one thing but i think generally speaking comedians are, are careful i think people like netflix organizations like, like netflix they should be hyper vigilant these are people's lives and while baby reindeer it's an important it's a seminal cultural event it talks about issues of male abuse it talks about stalking it's it's wonderfully written. It's brilliantly acted. It has a, a sense of real intimacy in the way that it gets the message across. But Netflix haven't been cautious. The casting of the individual as the alleged stalker, just very poor. And as for saying that she'd been convicted when it may be that they hadn't actually checked it, well, I'm afraid Joseph does not advise you, Netflix, to do that again. Absolutely fascinating. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Really appreciate it.